Steve Henry, founder of uh, ad agency HHCL. Now, you spoke in the conference here in Singapore about the advertising business industry being at uh, something of a watershed. I think it's a watershed for a lot of reasons, really. I mean, I think you've got uh, the emerging media, obviously, and I think because of that, there's a real crisis of confidence between agencies and clients. And if you go back to when the internet emerged, obviously that has massive implications for advertising and I think most traditional agencies didn't grab that at all, they didn't address it and I think clients therefore over the last eight, nine, ten years have, have been thinking, wait a minute, you know, traditional agencies aren't providing the answers that I need, therefore they've been going to digital agencies and it's all been splitting the influence and splitting the relationship. So I think ad agencies are, are, have been finding it very, very tough the last eight to ten years and I think it's it's worse now because of something I've noticed a lot of in the UK which is what I'd call a kind of emerging anti-consumerism I mean in Britain Britain was the, the first country to get into the recession you know apparently it's going into it deeper than anybody else it may be in it longer than anybody else and one way of looking at the recession I think is is, is that it's a it's a it's a response against consumerism it's a feeling of saying we've had too much of consumerism I mean, the, the conversations I've heard from people, people have been saying the last 20 years, you know, consumerism has been going rampant. Lots of people have filled their houses with stuff, uh, you know, but they're not happy. And therefore, I think there's a, you know, there's a lot of people going, well, we're tightening our belts and we don't feel so bad because of that. So I think that, you know, that's going to have a massive impact. So you're expecting something of a backlash then? I think so. Well, whether it happens now, or whether it happens the next time this happens. Do you know what I mean? There will be. I think there will. Be. I think people are starting to ask the questions. I mean, we've seen people asking the questions from business periodicals right the way down, saying, you know, capitalism is that you know it doesn't seem to be the final answer. What is beyond that? What's beyond consumerism? I mean, I think there'll be notions of appropriate consumption will be very important. I think notions of community will be very important people being in the sense that we're in this together rather than being competing with each other uh, which are essentially that's essentially an anti-capitalist sentiment so I think there's um, there's lots going on and I think the anti-consumerist movement is, is, is just going to get bigger and bigger yeah this is then going to have a major impact on marketing advertising and how companies position themselves it, it can't do anything but. I mean, I, I don't know what the implications are for advertising. It's one of the things I was asking the question this morning in the conference because I've talked uh, to ad agencies all around the world about this and, I, and to all of them I said, what are the implications for this? Because, you know, advertising is so in, obviously inherently tied in with consumerism and con capitalism. As the, as, as the public mood shifts away from that, what are the implications for advertising? I mean, I think it's... I don't know what the answer is, but I think what it's going to be about is advertising understanding the notions of appropriate consumption and building brands that really understand that and, as I say, understand appropriate consumption as opposed to excessive consumption. But it's a difficult concept because essentially advertising is there to, to provoke demand. If you start asking the question, you know, is that demand that advertising provoked, is that sustainable? then that pokes a, a question right at the heart of advertising, yeah. So Martin Sorrell of uh, WPP has been speaking here in Singapore. He was saying that uh, 2009 is going to be a write-off, 2010 is also going to be difficult, uh, a tough time with L-shaped recovery, an anemic uh, recovery of sorts, he said. But there's still going to be problems moving forward. How do you see things panning out? All change, all change. I mean, I think you know, I've worked for a long time in the advertising industry, so I'm very fond of it. You know, there's a lot of very bright people in the industry. But I think there are a lot of very bright people, but I don't think there are enough radical people. I mean, I think when change happens, you know, you can resist it or you can embrace it. And the advertising industry has resisted it to its cost. And, you know, we've seen massive change over the last 10 years. That change can only, you know, expand and get quicker and get bigger. And the industry needs, needs to embrace that. And, it, and it, it, it hasn't been. So I can see massive change. I mean, I think what will happen is you'll see the breakdown of the bigger networks and you'll see clients wanting to work with smaller groups of people 
who uh, don't bring the overheads. I mean, see, one way of looking at the advertising agency model is it's a bit of a Frankenstein's model. So whenever anything new comes along, any new media, they have to bolt on the experts onto the existing body. So what that means is you end up with an unwieldy body. You end up with agencies whereby you go to the meeting with a client, there'll be 15 people from the agency there, which is crazy. It doesn't make any financial sense. So I think what clients are going to be looking for are smaller groups of people who are kind of strategic and creative experts, who don't bring massive overheads, who can then call in experts from other areas on an ad hoc basis. But I, you know, it, we're not going to see the death of all the big networks straight away, but I, I do think it's, you know, unwieldiness is going to be a problem in the future. Flexibility is the, is the key in the future. And the greater move to new media from traditional media, or, or is that overstated? Traditional media has, has, has served the advertising industry very, very well, but the problem with it is that it, it presupposes the existence of a captive audience, if you like. And I think, you know, we're not, you know, we're seeing the erosion of that captive audience through technology like Sky Plus, on-demand viewing and all the rest of it. So the new media will, you know, has and will fundamentally change advertising. Now you spoke in the conference here in Singapore about the need for creativity. Um, how essential is that? Creativity requires a certain amount of confidence because I think most creative people are by nature experimenters and they want to push and they want to do something. I mean, creative people aren't interested in formulas and repeating themselves, they're interested in new things. And I think that's how you, that's why creativity is so important, why it can bring a disproportionate result for clients, is when you get category redefining thinking, revolutionary thinking, radical thinking. Um, the difficulty is in unconfident times, uh, radical thinking is difficult. I mean, a model that I'm working with at the minute, uh, it's kind of, if you've got, would, would ask clients to experiment with about 20% of their budget and to use 80% for, you know, for conventional stuff. I mean, a few years ago, McKinsey put out a report and they said to marketeers, put 75% of your budget into conventional messages in conventional media, but in 25% of your budget, conduct what they call well-conducted well, well experiments. So I experiment. And it's similar if you've got savings and you go to any accountant, they'll tell you put 80% of it somewhere safe, gamble with 20% of it, because if you don't, you're going to get the same as the building societies give you, so why bother? So I think that's the model, is to say to clients, look, you need to experiment because that's what creativity is about and that's what's going to bring you the disproportionate results. Saying to a client, experiment with 100% of your budget right now sounds insane. So what, what I think the answer is just to say, look, experiment with about 20% of your budget, and that, I believe, will bring the disproportionate results. But with experimentation, you have to allow for people to make mistakes and take risks. Yeah, as soon as you say make mistakes, you see, I mean, that's, <laughs> um, that's you know, that's a difficult thing to say. My belief is that crea creative people operate, as I say, in an area of experimentation and wanting to take risks. Now that, uh, you know, brings with it the possibility of things not working. That's why I think um, the idea of experimenting and being creative with a proportion of the budget and 20% of the budget. As I say, it's the same model if you take your savings to an account, any accountancy firm in the world probably will say the same thing. It doesn't matter what your risk profile is. They'll say more or less, keep 80% of it safe and experiment with 20% of it, right? Because that, if it goes down in theory, that, you know, it, you're covered by what's, what you're doing with the 80%, but if it, as and when it goes up, that's when you get the disproportionate rewards. And I think the same thing is absolutely true of advertising. Steve Henry, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much.